Welcome back to Daytime here on Rogers TV. Well, one of the buzzwords I think we're hearing so much more of is about gluten intolerance. It's yeah. uh, it's all over the place. I mm -hmm. mean, I think people are starting to be really mindful of what they're actually eating and why they're eating it. And we're going to find out exactly what's involved with gluten intolerance and how we can in in improve our diets with our gluten-free foods. And joining us to tell us how she did it is Victoria Ye, who wrote a cookbook. This is your cookbook right here, right, yes, Victoria? Yes, yep. Where do I start? Your essential gluten-free, dairy-free, and sugar-free food allergy cookbook. Thank you for being on the show. Thank we you so much for having it. me. So tell us, uh, tell us the background of this and, and sort of how you got involved in gluten-free. I'm assuming that is something you found in your life. Absolutely. Well, about eight years ago, I had uh, a lot of chronic problems. I had chronic sinus infections. My stomach never quite felt right. I had a lot of headaches. I went to visit a doctor who practices integrative medicine, so kind of like naturopathic medicine. Okay. Okay. And the first thing he told me, stop eating wheat, dairy, and sugar. And I completely <laughs> panicked. Yeah, because, because you think, what else is there? Exactly. It's like every food that I eat, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Um, so basically, I went from this panic state to finding that there were some gluten-free alternatives in stores. You could find gluten-free right. pastas, gluten-free breads. Um, but then ex that kind of became a little bit expensive and inconvenient sometimes. Mm -hmm. you know, it was, it's nice to have sometimes. But then I learned how to reverse engineer my own recipes and basically <laughs> make substitutions so that I could turn any recipe gluten-free, dairy-free, and sugar-free. So wow. can you literally change almost any recipe, like a traditional recipe that grandma left with you and turn it into a gluten-free recipe? Absolutely, and especially if you have multiple food allergies to say gluten and dairy and sugar, corn, soy, anything like that, right. that's really absolutely key to feeling satisfied and self-sufficient with that diet is learning how to make those substitutions and you can make them to almost any recipe. Very wow. cool. Wow, let's backtrack a little bit because this <coughs> is really interesting. So if somebody's watching uh, right now and they think, oh, okay, maybe I'm gluten intolerant, you mentioned a couple of symptoms, but let's talk a little bit more about what symptoms people would be experiencing. Sure. Well, there's about 1% of the population that has celiac disease. And celiac disease is where your immune system gets confused when you eat gluten, and okay. then it attacks your intestinal, your intestinal walls. So then you can absorb nutrients. You can uh, experience anything from... Uh, diarrhea or indigestion. Some women actually have infertility or miscarriages. Wow. It can even lead to some unexplained neurological problems. Uh, now, if you're intolerant to gluten and wheat, so there's about 15% of the population that falls into that category. And it can be anything from sinus congestion like I have, uh, rash, eczema, inflammation, um, you know, digestion is such a fundamental part of our bodies that it can really manifest in anything. So I would say if you have anything chronic mm -hmm. that doesn't seem to have Just a direct cause, feeling yummy. Right. Yeah. Yeah. then you might want to look at the food that you're eating. Is it, is it easily diagnosed? from most doctors, because I could come in and go, geez, I have this rash and they could mm -hmm. test me for who knows yeah, what, right? Yeah, how do they right? test it? Yeah. How do they go about that? It's, uh, you really have to find a doctor that is open-minded to that, right? Okay. So a lot of people do visit their doctors. There are some doctors like that and then some naturopaths as well. You can get tested for allergies. There are blood tests as well for celiac disease or a stomach biopsy. For me, the easiest way to do it, and my personal non-medical advice, would be mm -hmm. to cut it out, cut out common allergens like gluten, uh, wheat, dairy, sugar, soy, and corn for about three to six weeks. Okay. And if you feel better, then it might be one of those things. <laughs> right, 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 right. <laughs> so the light bulb so goes we've off. heard of this before, like elimination technique, where you now you suggest taking them all out and then reintroducing one at a time exactly. or taking one at a time out. I would take everything out, okay. start with a clean slate. If you start feeling better, then you know it's one of them, and then reintroduce one at a time. Okay. And the key with that is you have to be 100% elimination. So you can't cheat once in a right. while, sneak okay. a cookie here and there. <laughs> right. Yeah, because it's ingredients too, right? I mean, Absolutely. you have to be, I'm sure, be mindful. I mean, you said sugar, dairy, and wheat. Yep. Those are the three. Mm -hmm. And I mean, my gosh, if you look at your ingredient label on oh, many, yeah. many things, it's, it's in there, right? Yeah. And gluten is actually in wheat, rye, and barley. Okay. So that's also beer. Uh, Sorry, Derek. <laughs> See you, Victoria. Yep. I'm done. <laughs> What's your substitute for beer in here, I Victoria? I love how Victoria went, that's in beer. <laughs> we just met. I don't know. 
<laughs> it's in candies, any thickened soups or sauces, pretty much most processed foods okay. will also have gluten and dairy in it. Well, what can help people too on this three to six week program is just buy your cookbook, right? Absolutely. Now, how about you show us some of these, or yeah. give us what examples of some of these substitutions <laughs> sure. so everybody stops panicking at home. Oh. Okay, the first and most simple way to eliminate all of these sorts of allergens from your diet is to stick to whole foods, like real foods. Okay. So fresh fruits and veggies, what? some brown I'm rice there. I'm what are these whole foods you speak fruits of? Fruits and vegetables. <laughs> So grains, meats, those are all safe. Now, when you want to venture outside of that and have maybe some pasta and bread, you can find gluten-free pastas and breads in, in stores. Okay. And when it comes to substituting in your recipes, there's a lot of different options. I've covered that in a few charts in my book. Okay. Um, but a few simple ones. So butter, you can substitute with grapeseed oil. Okay. Um, or coconut oil is another one you can use. For milk, uh, there's a lot of choices. So there's soy milk, like everyone knows. Uh, there's also rice milk, which is really nice and naturally sweet. There's no added oh, sugar to it. Oh, interesting. Okay. Um, there's a couple almond milks available on the market milk. as yeah. well. I, I, yeah. I really do like it too. Yeah. And of course, I've tried the soy, but I've never tried the rice milk. Mm -hmm. I yeah, rice I milk either. is great for recipes like cakes because it just adds a little bit of natural sweetness to okay. it. Mm -hmm. uh, and then with uh, gluten, there's a few different choices too with cakes, the one that I'm going to show you later on today. 50-50 uh, sweet rice flour and brown rice flour. And okay. that'll give you a really nice moist cake. It sweet won't be rice flour. Yes. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. Now, okay. as far as uh, when you make that substitution, is it the same measurements or did you have to do some testing and, and, and change up the measurements? I did a lot of different testings and proportions. So those proportions I have in my book for sweet rice flour and brown rice flour, the best uh, is 50-50. Okay. So you always want to keep the same total volume. So if you're replacing one cup of wheat flour, then in total you'll be replacing one cup. So okay. half a cup of sweet rice flour and half a cup of brown well, rice. Well that makes it easy, yeah. for sure. Yeah, definitely. And then for sugar, uh, the Stevia is a really wonderful substitute, and this is actually a natural sweetener. It's a plant extract. It's 800 times sweeter than sugar. Wow. So don't do this. My husband did that once. <laughs> right. <laughs> don't just take a spoonful and put it in, no. in, yeah, your, do in that. your green tea. I use, about, yeah. I use about a quarter teaspoon for a cup of sugar. Okay. A quarter teaspoon wow. for a and cup of And you use this in all, your, all of your wow. baking? I use it in most of my baking, and okay. I use it normally in combination with maple syrup or honey. Okay. Just okay. because that'll give it a nice flavor to it as well. Well, it's you're going idea. to yeah. show us that you can, in fact, make a delicious chocolate cake yes. with no sugar, no wheat, mm -hmm. no dairy, no gluten. No okay? beer. And she's going to, uh, no beer. Sorry, no. Derek. And you're going to prove that to us. So yes. we're looking forward to that. We'll take a break and we want to, um, uh, we're going to take a break and we're going to have the band play. That's right. And then we'll come back and we'll be all set up to make a delicious gluten-free chocolate cake by Victoria. Don't go away. Be right back after this.